cloudy and overcast, there's fog. Um, it looks like it's about um, just past slack tide. It's going back up to to um, hmm, going back up to high tide right now. It should reach that by nine something, which is several hours from now. So this is like just past slack tide. Um, I had my my last sea worm on, but those little buggers uh, stole it from me. So I got to a, I used a smaller hook, and now I'm gonna have to switch over to my squid, which was not working very well over the last couple of days. So I'm gonna do that for a couple of while for a while until I get a, a call from the missus. She originally said this yesterday. Hey, you were up early yesterday. Why didn't you go fishing? And I was like, hmm, well, um, need some gas in my tank, need something to eat. Maybe next time. This is that time, the very next day. I'm on vacation down here in Cape Cod, South Massachusetts, family. So I'm doing just that. There are some fishermen with the charters going out right now. People own big boats, not me, uh, doing their thing. This guy across the way with a big five gallon bucket. Looks like he's throwing something white as well. And that's definitely lightweight. Uh, that is definitely live bait. That has a weight, on, a weight in the hook. So he's throwing squid as well. I haven't seen them pull anything up yet, but I'm gonna give it a try. So I'm not sure if I should keep this recording or not. Let's take a little look around the area just so you know what's going on again. So this is the uh, the other side of the uh, the harbor here. This is where I am, and if you walk across here. Uh, there's that guy over there. Uh, you can see the harbor coming in. And you can just walk down these little rocks and park the car over there. Boom, there's a beach here. You can cast down the beach and the beach goes around the corner. You know, pretty simple. So, if you're in the area, I found that the Falmouth Harbor Inlet, jetty, whatever you want to call it, works pretty well for getting the bite. But really, anywhere the, um, the water is moving. It's a pretty good place. I haven't had much luck with the bluefish and the striper. I saw in a weekly update by Ryan Collins that you have to be in certain places at certain times to make that happen. So I'm here trying to get lucky. Let's try this out. So I've switched over to the squid and lo and behold, as soon as it defrosted, I started getting some bites. Little nibbles, little pulls, and then like one big pull. And I realized that my reel isn't what it used to be. When I pulled on it, it actually went into reverse mode, even though it was in the correct mode. I got this thing for 15 bucks over in uh, Indian Rocks Beach in Tampa, because it was cheaper than actually renting a rod for $20. And at the time it worked fine. It's a South Bend Neutron, with the um, you know the likewise the likewise uh, combo reel, but the, the spool is like loose and wiggling, and this bottom part is like wiggling a lot. You see that? And for some reason, it just doesn't want to reel correctly. When I tighten the spool here on the other side, I can't even crank it anymore. So fish got the better of me, I'll say, because of this rod that one time, but. Now that I know that something's biting the squid, I'm gonna keep at it and see what happens. Hopefully I can pull into some, uh, maybe a bluefish or something. But it's probably just a small scuff pulling at it or one of those weird ass things I caught last time. Looks like there's some uh, boats going through here. A boat called Something Fishy. And a girl in a Key West boat. There, who the hell's over? Who the hell knows where they're going? The guy across the way is at the point of the rocks. See there's something going on there. I'm gonna pass around once these boats go through and see if I can't get something happening and get this stupid reel to work.
did want to say one thing. I've noticed uh, around here and many other places, I'll describe later, that there's been people of uh, older age uh, just watching people fish from afar while they, you know, do their, drink their coffee, they're, they're reading the newspaper, and then when you come home, when you're, you're finished and you come back to your car, like, hey, what's biting out there? Did you catch anything? How's the tide? How's the fish? What kind of fish are you catching? And they're, they're trying to learn, asking questions. But what I'm really wondering is why aren't they fishing? What What's the deal? They're out here. They're watching people fish. They're obviously trying to learn something. Why aren't they fishing themselves? Question mark. And I've seen this here, uh, Massachusetts, up in Boston, down in Virginia, North Carolina, Florida, etc. In Maryland too. And it's the same thing everywhere. What's going on? If you know, comment down below. And while you're doing that, click subscribe. We're we'll doing some cool stuff here. And I'm gonna be working hard, helping you go fishing. And I'm making some new stuff out there that's gonna help you do that. So stay tuned. I'm still working on it. I'm on vacation now, so I'm not really pressing on it, but I'm gonna get that done and use my free co camp skills. I did this years ago, like four, when I first started. If you look into that and you want to learn, if you want to learn some programming skills and you don't have the money to sign up for a course, go to freecocamp.com and they'll help you out. Another boat. I can't get a bike from that. Now I'm close to the rocks. I'll get a bite from one of those weird things. I was told with the uh, the live bait around here, it's best if you find a way to keep the live bait moving. We're in moving water here in the inlet, and the waves are rocking it around. But that's not all the movement you want to do. Every you don't want to treat it like a bobber and it's just sitting there and you're, you're like, oh, duh, duh, duh. wish I had a bite. You want to give it a, a few cranks, slow pulls, and let it sit for a while. But I, I've been trying out some variations. I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to it. But you just want to represent it to the fish in the area. If you have a weight, it's bouncing against the bottom. It's brushing up all the dirt. And then your bait becomes visible to the fish because their auditory system is hearing it. They're seeing the puff of smoke. They're seeing the white flesh of the squid or whatever else you're using. And then they'll come toward it. But if it sits there too long, only the original fish that inspected it will see it. You won't get a chance to see new fish in the area. So once in a while, give it a little tug, a little pull. As long as it's not near any rocks or any other obstructions that you know of, it's fine. Further down a little bit, I, I did get hung on something in the middle of nowhere. Hopefully it doesn't happen again while doing this technique. 
this boat doesn't go over my line or the other boat that's coming in. So I'm going to be a little advantageous with my poles here. around to showing you my rig it's very simple I just have a small I'm not sure what I uh, or size snail hook it's not a two it's probably like a four I think I'm saying a four or six and I have a round ball head on a, which is which is attached to a swivel it's I thought it would bounce around the bottom but here in the final harbor inlet the uh, the current isn't too strong last time I had the big pyramid head two ounces and that thing stuck to the bottom so if that's what you want, cool. But if you're doing this movement style, maybe a pyramid is not going to work very well for you. It's gonna catch on things, it's gonna hook up against rocks, but this round one will actually bounce over things, it'll roll on the bottom, and it's more, more uh, less likely to get caught between two rocks when you're trying to slide through the middle and you're like, oh shit, I'm stuck on something. Last thing I wanna do now is tie on a whole new rig, Get all slimy again with whatever, whatever bait I'm using, then hope for a fish again. Like maybe I'll just end my day. Don't do it. Do it right the first time. You'll have less complication and hopefully catch more fish. I didn't mean to show you right now, but I'm hoping whatever was biting randomly will come back and give me some action. Hey, lo and behold, it's the C2 vehicle rib which means it has a hard bottom and inflatable sides. Very stable. Just rolled in, a whole bunch of fish above, I don't know, two inches long, just flew out of the water, like about 50 of them, all going in, oh, in the opposite direction of my weight and my lure that I was dragging toward the rocks here. So there's uh, a large collection of uh, bait fish in here. I'm not sure what, pretty small, but there's some food in here now. So something should be on the prowl. to actually go to the right to the end of the rocks and see what happens.
everything off the point. I'm gonna go back to the spot where I, well, had a bunch and see if I can't get another one.